Chris and this is my Cooling Fan Wiring Part 2 video. Now I'm just making this video talking to you, apologizing to all the people because I was supposed to make this video right after I made that one and just got busy and kind of forgot about it. So we're going to try to address all the problems on ways to hook the relays up. That video was just about hooking the fans up and getting all your breakers and relays uh, sorted out. Now we're going to figure out how to hook those relays up and thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this video. And sorry people out there. Alright, so in this video we're only going to be using the 1 and 2 speed setup. And just go watch that video and remember that anything you hook to 2 is just going to be hooked to the middle relay for high speed, low speed. Okay, so in that video we were using two sensors that ground out. And the only reason I did that is because I didn't know about the BMW dual temp switch. So I have a video, look it up, BMW dual temp thermal switch. It gives part numbers and shows different locations and ways to mount this switch. And we are going to show how to wire this up. And if you're going to wire your car with air conditioner, you're probably, or you are, going to need this switch for sure. We'll get to that. So in that video, we were just wiring them up the easiest, simplified way possible. We were just getting power off the breaker, running it straight to 86, sensors ground out, turning our 1 and 2 fans on. Okay, but when you wire them straight like that, the problem is that they don't turn off when you shut your ignition off because this is contained in its own area, has nothing to do with the key switch. So if you did wire them up like that, there's there's nothing wrong with it. You can fix it. So let's talk about how you fix it. So it's super simple. You just run 86 to ignition on with the key, your fuse box, wherever you can find on with the key. That way it's going to power the relays and the sensors are still going to turn them on or off. Okay, so a lot of people were asking me, if you wire it up like this, how do you turn them on with your AC? So in case you don't know, a lot of modern cars with computers, when you turn your AC compressor on, it automatically puts uh, both fans on or in high speed. In this situation, wired like this, you cannot do that. There is a way to do it, and it's by using this one. But if you have them wired up like this, there's no way to bypass or jump in here where you automatically have... Uh, both fans are high speed on with your AC compressor. So in case you don't know, AC compressor's got negative and positive, and this is a green and black. It goes, this goes through a pressure switch, turns on your AC compressor out on the engine bay. But when you turn your AC on and not to have your high speed or both fans come on is not really an issue because for many, many, many years, they did not have that feature. That's a, a computer feature. So you would just still rely on the temperature sensors to do the job and keep the engine cool. So if I was wiring my car up and I had this on there, I wouldn't even worry about it. You don't necessarily need your AC compressor to trigger on both fans or high speed because you already have temperature sensors that are doing that for you. So if you want to run AC on your car and simplify everything for the future, get you the BMW dual temp switch. I have a video on it. It shows part numbers and the two different sensors they have available. And in that video, I show myself trying to make a bushing. Don't try to do that. Buy the bushing. It's not nine, 10, 11 dollars. It's already the metric to standard or converting it over to whatever you need. Okay, so the main thing you have to understand about the BMW thermal switch is it does not work like the, the common ones on cars. The common ones, thermal switches that they have an element in there that once it gets the right temperature, it's going to ground out this sensor. So you have one wire grounds out. That's the ones we were using in the other videos because they're easy to find and they're, you know, $5 and they're everywhere. This one you got to order it. The difference with this one is it has one wire that comes in and let's say when it reaches 180 degrees, it connects this circuit right here. And then when it reaches 190 degrees, and then it connects this circuit. So these two are completely individual from each other. We're going to test this switch at the end of the video just to make sure it works like it's supposed to. Okay, to run the BMW switch to solve all your problems forever, you're going to run hot on with the key to this terminal right here. Top terminal, see it's by itself up there. You're going to run it to on with key wherever you get that from, the fuse box. Wherever you get it from, you're going to wire it to the top terminal. 18 gauge doesn't matter where it comes from. In this situation, we're not running temp sensors down there, so 85 is just grounded to chassis wherever you want that ground to be. So now you're running your 180 over here to fan one, and your 190 over here to fan two. That's all you do, it's simple as that. Everything's ready to go. Okay, so what about running air conditioner? On our GM, we have green positive and black as the ground. Whenever you turn an AC on, it powers this green wire, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. 
all you do is you bypass this hot wire in between right here to your number two fan so when i say bypass this is a bypass you're gonna have to splice into this wire and you're gonna have to splice into that wire just like that you don't splice into it up there you splice into it right here this is your bypass i can't remember how many times i message that to people and it is confusing if you don't know about it but that's all it is it's super simple okay so if you're running the high speed low speed with the five pin relay in the center you're going to bypass it the same way to 86 just like that all right so now we need to dis discuss these little temperature switches this is probably the cheapest one that they sell this is what it looks like we're going to go test these let's go ahead and test them both and then we'll come back to this so I've been completely remodeling my house and that's why everything is tore up in here. Just showing you that so you don't think that this is how my kitchen looks all the time. But what we're doing is we're trying to confirm that this sensor, instead of grounding out, that it completes the circuit on, on the high temp side and the low temp side uh, individually from each other. So that's all we're doing. Let's We're just gonna wait here till it warms up enough and then we'll get power across both sides. So we have it on continuity we're gonna check the resistance and there should be none. So this is the low and the high on this side and all it's gonna do is connect, complete the circuit to the bottom terminal. So we've already had it boiling. Let's see if it's at least 170 degrees. Okay, very little resistance. So that means it's at least 170. Let's check the high one, I think it's 185. It is not making contact. These two are not making contact so we're gonna boil it and I'm gonna let you know exactly how long it takes okay so it's been about five minutes of starting to boil so our low temp works and our high temp works so we know that switch is good let's let it cool down and make sure that it breaks the circuit as it cools down to turn our fans off so our high speed it turned it off and let's see our low speed so it's still like 185 degrees or whatever. So let's let it cool down and make sure it turns our low speed off too. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. The high temp broke the circuit. So that's good. Low temp. There we go. So the switch shut both of our fans off once the temperature drops, I guess, below 170. Okay, so let's check out the other type of switch real quick. This is the cheapest one from Flexilite. I think this was under $20. Now this is has to be the most misused switch of all time the problem with these switches is that everybody seems to run all the power from the fans through the switch burn it up and then they talk crap about this little thing for the rest of their life this is meant to power or trigger on your relay you can run a fan through it but you have to make sure that it's not more than this can handle which is 20 amps so if you were going to run you couldn't even run one of the flexilite fans you would have to run a like a helper fan i think they're Pusher fans, I believe, that mount on the outside of your radiator towards the front of your car. That's what this is for. This is not to power your big uh, cooling fans for your car. Okay, so I got the probe in the water. I got this down to the lowest temperature setting. And all it's going to do is complete our circuit. That's all it's going to do is complete these two wires. Okay, so we're going to turn the temperature up on it a little bit and see if this thing will complete the circuit. All right, so this little thing is moving around as the water cools. At first it was turning on right here. Now it's turning on down here. Okay, the water is, I don't, ah, it's kind of hot, but not that hot. So this switch works. So I was just showing you that these both work. This one has an adjustable temperature range from, I don't know, like let's just say 160 to 230 or something. So we have it on the lowest setting and it is turning on and off, completing that circuit. That's all that this switch is meant to do. Now we can move on back to the wiring diagrams. So the only reason I'm showing you this so you don't buy one of these and try to run all your power through this. This is just a little thermal switch with an adjustable temperature on it. This thing works really good and works a, a very long time if you use it right. So let's just get an idea how we would wire this in if we were going to use it or we had to use it. So when you're using this switch, of course, you stick this into the radiator. It's going to give you instructions. It says like 18 inches from the inlet hose. But either way, you're gonna run hot on with the key to this wire too. And you're gonna run it to this switch just like that. And then with this stuck in the radiator, adjust it to whatever temperature you want it to come on, then if you're gonna run one of these, you would have to run both of these wires 
to turn both of your fans on at one time. You don't have an option of high speed, low speed, unless you were going to buy two, or you don't have the option of fan one, fan two. So there's nothing wrong with this temperature switch. I bought one just to have one. But you see the way you would wire this up, you would use this to turn on both of your fans at one time. You don't want to run your fan power through here. The instructions for this little part actually shows you how to do that, which this actually should not even be in this wiring because it doesn't specify the amps of the fan. And you know, I'm pretty sure like a thousand people have tried to put this on some high amp drawing fans and it's just gonna burn your little switch up. So, okay, so I'm not trying to bash Flexalite or anything like that, but you know, I have a bunch of people arguing with me on my videos talking about that, that people that write this are the geniuses that know everything. Absolutely not. Anybody could write this up. But in this case, I mean, it's kind of right, but it doesn't specify the amps or anything of the fan. So, you know, this is actually kind of misleading. It should say like 20 amp max right here. I like this switch. It comes with a little mounting hardware and everything. It was like under 20 bucks. I'll definitely buy more of these in the future. Great product. I like Flexalite. So that's it for the video. Just wanted to give you an idea on some little wiring tips. You should be able to gather enough information from this video to help you in your project. If I get more questions and stuff, maybe I'll make another video. But if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.